Hello and welcome to the Zixi Zen Master demonstration. My name is Natron Dionarain and I am the technical partner manager here at Zixi. Uh, today I will be taking you through a Zen Master demo. Zen Master is our browser-based uh, orchestration platform that allows you to manage your entire workflow right from the browser anywhere in the world. <clears throat> To take you through, I'll explain a couple of things. Uh, so here we have our feeders, broadcasters, and receivers. These are the three applications we make um, that are the logical components to move the video. Um, and then next we have here our sources. Think of these as the inputs into the platform. Um, and then if you want to do something with your source, you'll have to create a channel, whether you're transporting your source as you know a Zixi protocol, RISC protocol, or any of the other protocols uh, that we support, uh, you'll need to create a channel. Uh, you can also create a, a transcode channel uh, to transcode that source down to a lower bit rate, or you can transcode it into OTT format for HLS and DASH delivery. Um, and then to deliver the content, we have our targets. So uh, whether you're delivering that broadcast quality content or the OTT formats, those will all be on their targets. Uh, and then finally, we have the remote access dashboard, which gives you access to the edge devices, the encoders, decoders, uh, to manage your entire uh, ecosystem. The remote access dashboard will give you the full access to the UI of that encoder, decoder, or transcoder uh, that's on a remote network. On the right-hand side, uh, we'll have open issues. And then below, we'll have recent, -ish, uh, recent events log. So if something's OK, something goes offline, you'll see what's happened on the platform recently. Uh, now I'll take you through the dashboards one at a time. Please feel free to add any questions you have in the chat. Taking a look at our maps dashboard, I'll uh, click on the North American uh, workflow here. And as you can see, this is a nice way of visualizing your workflow over a map. Um, so if you had like a broadcaster in Atlanta and you have a stream coming out of Florida, um, you know, you can, you know, draw that or move this around if it's coming from, you know, the eye or something. Uh, but essentially, it's a nice way of visualizing your workflow uh, overlaid on a map. Next up is our grids dashboard. Um, our grids dashboard will essentially uh, show you all the details um, of, your, of your platform. Uh, and this is customizable to show whatever you want in the boxes. As you can see here, we're showing bit rate, uh, TR 101 status, and the latency configured on the stream. Um, as you can see, some of these are in an error state. I can actually click on these and go right into the resource and start troubleshooting it. Um, and then finally, this is all customizable to show you know, whatever you'd want to see in the boxes. Um, you can even remove the uh, web controls and go full screen. Um, you know, whether you want to use dark or not, you, you know, those are all the capabilities that's uh, built into the platform. Um, the other way of visualizing your content in a NOC um, is the source thumbnails. So you can have the thumbnail view uh, with the BU meters and the uptime uh, also uh, displayed in your NOC. And again, this also has the ability to remove the browser controls and go into dark mode for uh, so that it's friendly to be displayed in the NOC. Um, next, we have the feeders. So feeders are typically the uh, part of an encoder, or you can run the software itself. As you can see here, we're capturing a number of details and metadata on the feeders, including CPU and RAM. If I were to click on one of these feeders, um, I can actually see the, the streams that are on this device at the moment. Um, and I get a nice visual layout of the CPU and RAM on the device. Um, <laughs> If I were to uh, navigate to the history tab here, you can see I also have the uh, CPU and memory um, historically. So if there was an issue that was identifi identified yesterday, I can actually go back you know, in time or you know, I can go back up to a year uh, and see the, you know, if there was any CPU or RAM issues that affected the stream on this device. Um, we also, for every resource, there's a number of different tabs. Uh, the events tab will show you, you know, when this device was connected, when it's offline, uh, any other errors. Configuration will give you the ability or the instructions on connecting to Zen Master. Um, and then finally, the notes field, uh, basically you will, uh, uh, you know, you can type in quick notes here for other operators of the platform and it automatically saves it for you. 
I'll skip uh, broadcasters one second um, just to show that receivers is the other endpoint, and we can see it looks exactly the same. I have the exact same tabs, and we're collecting the same set of analytics. Uh, taking a look at broadcaster. Um, so with the broadcaster, we have a native integration with AWS, uh, Azure, and GCP. So essentially, we can spin up uh, virtual machines uh, within, with just a click of a button, and I'll demo how that works. So let's take a look at this AWS ingest cluster. Uh, broadcasters work with clusters, and um, this one is called AWS ingest. Um, and as you can see here, we have one machine that's running in this cluster. It's been up for about 79 minutes, uh, 79 hours, sorry. Uh, and we see a CPU and RAM that we're monitoring on this device. Um, we also capture the IP address, uh, but we remove the need for users to manage IP addresses. Most of the platform uses uh, DNS names. Um, so to add another broadcaster to this cluster, I can click on this add primary broadcaster button here. Um, and this will go out and make all the API calls to spin up that virtual machine uh, in my AWS account. And now within you know, a minute or two, I instantly uh, you know, expanded the ability to send more streams through the same cluster. Um, so now I've doubled my capacity within this, uh, this AWS ingest cluster. And this broadcaster will spin up in another minute or two, um, and then it'll be ready to go. The other option I have here is to add a backup broadcaster. Um, so if uh, one of these broadcasters were to fail, the backup broadcaster would take over and start uh, processing streams. Um, next, we'll jump into the sources dashboard. My favorite source is uh, from Cheddar, so we'll take a look at that. Um, clicking on the Cheddar source here, I can see a number of metadata on the left-hand side about the source. Um, you know, the latency settings, the IP it's coming from, the bit rate, you know, the uptime, it's been up for about 848 hours. <clears throat> and then below that, I can see, you know, the things we're monitoring, uh, SCSI alerts, that sort of thing, if it's turned on or not. On the right-hand side, I can dive into the PID information. So some very technical uh, details. I can look into the video PID here and see that I'm getting HD quality video. And then if I scroll back up on the right-hand side, I have a thumbnail of the video right now. I can also play this in VLC to do a quick uh, full video audio check if I needed to. Um, however, with the time constraint, I will just uh, move towards the next uh, dashboards. Um, Zixi's uh, SDVP uh, monitors for frozen video, blank pictures, silent audio, audio clipping. Uh, so these are content alerts where we can basically um, you know, do the monitoring that you would have uh, operators do for you. So now you can be a bit more proactive on, you know, monitoring hundreds of streams instead of, you know, having people watching them on a monitor. Uh, below that, we have the TR101 Priority 1 and Priority 2 analytics. So these are the MPEG uh, standards for sending a stream. As you can see, we saw an error, but this shows us the last time I saw an error. If I wanted to, I can actually go into the history dashboard here. And this will give me, you know, the ability to go back to yesterday or two days ago or last week. Um, so let's look at the last seven days. Um, this stream was relatively healthy, but as you can see here, there was a, a period where it was offline and, you know, um, the, our charts here were going a little crazy. So let's take a look at what was going on. This, uh, this health score is new for Zixi um, as of spring 2021. Uh, the health score is currently at 100, as you can see. However, uh, on the right-hand side here, we have the not recovered network congestion, offline prediction, not recovered prediction, and network anomaly. So what we're doing here is, and this is something that's unique only to Zixi, we're gathering all the data from our protocol and analyzing it using machine learning to identify when we would potentially have an offline event or a network congestion or a not are not recovered prediction. So as you can see here, you know these these numbers uh, for not recovered are very low. Uh, so we're predicting that there was there will not be a drop packet. So we're essentially using machine learning and AI to identify when there's potentially going to be a, a failure. Now let's say we did have you know an issue here. I can actually go into my next set of charts to take a deep dive into what that issue is. Um, 
So this first chart will show me a, a collection of issues, whether it's a CC issue or a content quality miss or a TR101 miss. So this is kind of a summation chart that shows you almost all of the uh, content quality as well as the uh, TR101 analytics uh, all within one chart. So let's say I had you know an issue here. I can you know select that time frame and my chart will all reload to that specific time frame. Um, the next chart will you know give me an idea of what the network is doing at the moment. Um, you know, were there any not recovered packets or where you know there's always packet loss in a network. So I can you know toggle these to see which one um, you know had any issues. Um, now, now, you know, supposing I did have an issue, I'll go down to the next chart here. This is my network bitrate chart. And you can see we're tracking, you know, what is being used by the stream, the network uh, bitrate, the bitrate maximum, the minimum. Um, so that'll give me an idea, you know, of, you know, bitrate dropping off. Um, but then, you know, you know, which stream did it drop off from? Was it the video bitrate? Uh, so PID481 is obviously the video. Uh, 482 is the audio and PID 500 is the SCSI PID. So I can see here that you know um, there's a fairly co consistent bit rate across the streams, uh, but I need to get more information to really understand you know how something was affected. So let me expand a couple more of these charts, uh, and I'll talk about them in a minute. Um, so you know this uh, this chart with the PID bit rate is in, uh, you know is useful, but you know I need to know. Uh, did that actually affect the percent of uh, video I'm delivering? So as you can see here, both audio and video were 100% delivered. Um, but if you know I did have an issue on the video PID, uh, now we go down to our, our estimated uh, EPSNR, uh, estimated PSNR uh, chart. This chart allows you to uh, understand the quality of video without actually seeing the video. Um, so just a, a bit of explanation here. This chart is, uh, we did a study on H.264 uh, encoding. And basically from that study, we gathered the data, created an algorithm, and we applied that to the bitstream. And you know we can uh, get an e estimated PSNR score of within 1% of an actual PSNR score. So this is, uh, you know the higher the reds, the better the encode quality. The lower the reds, that's when I know my video is going to have some macro blocking or some frame dropouts. Um, so, you know, without anyone actually viewing the stream, I can, you know, create an alert to say, you know, if my estimated PSNR quality drops off to a certain amount, I want to know about it. Um, you know, and that's, that's the basis of the Zixi platform is you're more proactive about your stream, uh, your quality of service, as well as your quality of experience. And Zixi is helping to uh, manage that by doing some uh, analytics uh, and some, you know, machine learning on our data. And these are all unique only to the Zixi platform because uh, we're the only ones with the uh, Zixi data. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, if there was issues, you know, um, was my latency set correctly? Uh, currently the latency is set for four seconds on the stream. That's why on the Y axis here, uh, we have four at the top. Um, but as we can see here, none of my packets are taking a long time to come in. So I can actually drop my latency down to maybe half a second and still deliver a perfect stream. Um, so that's how you would use uh, you know, some of the charts here to diagnose issues. Um, a couple of things that uh, we also monitor are um, SCSI markers. So on this stream here, we have the SCSI dashboard. And as you can see here, we're monitoring the into and out of network. Um, if we saw an out of network, but we did not see an into network, we can alert on that to let the user know they may be sending black to air. Um, so that's something you know that could affect the uh, the monetization of of uh, the video, and that's something you know our users would want to know about. In addition to displaying you know the message, uh, you can actually get the full payload of that SCSI marker. Uh, so you no longer have to go and capture it. We have it here historically. You can go back and look at it, um, you know, as far as we've been collecting data on the stream. So that's, uh, that's the inputs. Those are the analytics we collect from the inputs. Um, now let's take a look at some channels. Uh, the first channel I'll take a look at here is, is our distribution channel here. Um, and we have a nice diagram that we can basically uh, show you the workflow of this specific channel. So as you can see here, we have a feeder with the source that's called from Cheddar, and we're sending that to a broadcast cluster 
uh, that is uh, running in a data center somewhere. Uh, and from there, we're setting it into Azure, uh, where it's being distributed to uh, Media Connect. It's currently offline. Uh, it's being sent to YouTube as well as a wrist output. So this helps to show the interoperability nature of Zixi. We can basically, you know, egress this content uh, across any protocol, whether, you know, it's uh, uh, for the customer or it's for a broadcast endpoint where they're gonna rebroadcast it and remonetize it. The other types of workflows we have um, include uh, the ability to do hitless failover. So this is where we're taking uh, two streams so they can go down two different network paths. And we're stitching it together here. We're calling it, you know, uh, HPV ZFX hitless or 102. Uh, this broadcast is basically pulling the stream and it'll pick up a packet if it's dropped from this path A from path B and stitch it together and send it downstream to any additional workflows. Um, so this hitless failover helps us to get to the six, seven nines of uptime, um, you know, by leveraging multiple networks and, uh, creating resiliency and redundancy uh, without any failures. The last type of channel we have is a transco channel. So I'll take a look at, let's take a look at a transco channel. Um, you know, taking advantage of the hitless failover, we're actually, you know, hitting a broadcaster that's running in uh, this cluster. And then we're going into Azure transcode where we're basically transcode, we're le leveraging GPUs uh, in Azure the transcode this to OTT formats. And here we have the four different uh, bit rates we're transcoding this to. Uh, and then finally, we're dropping this off at uh, an S3 bucket. Um, this ability to use GPUs for transcoding is available for both Azure, AWS, and GCP. Or if you had an on-prem uh, machine or server with a GPU in it, you'd be able to set up transcoding on that device as well. Uh, one unique thing about the Zixi transcoding platform is the ability to troubleshoot at a very detailed level. So I can play this entire stream in my browser or in VLC, or I could play one of the specific streams themselves. So if the lowest bit rate had, you know, uh, if people are complaining on the mobile device that the low bit rate has issues, I can actually come in here and play that. Uh, but usually we hear about issues after the fact. So I can actually go into this and look at the history and see the analytics of my transcode for this specific bit rate. Um, so I can see, you know, I was delivering uh, 24 frames per second pretty consistently without any issues. Um, I didn't have any drop frames or transcoder resets. Um, so this, you know, this is one of the great capabilities about the Zixi platform is you can see the details of the analytics of our transcoder. Um, now that, you know, we're, we have a transcode and we're delivering content, uh, we can go into targets here and see where that content is being delivered from to. Um, so if I were to take a look at this Zixi uh, stream, as you can see here, we have a number of different analytics. So initially on the sources dashboard, we had the analytics of the stream coming from the source. Now we're showing you the analytics of the stream being delivered to the endpoint. Um, and you can see here, we can show you if there's any packets that were dropped or recovered. Uh, and then we can get down to the very pin level information to show you if there were any issues uh, there as well. In addition to, you know, having analytics for Zixi streams, we also have uh, analytics for when you're delivering content into, uh, you know, HTTP endpoint. So, you know, if you're doing HLS, you want to know if there's any, um, you know, failed uploads. So as you can see here, we had one failed upload, uh, four failed uploads. Um, and, you know, this could potentially impact the downstream um, viewing of viewers watching this content. Uh, we also have the analytics for a wrist stream, uh, although the wrist does not have as much data being, you know, being provided out of the protocol itself. So we can definitely show you the percentage of unrecovered packets. Um, and each target also has a diagram, uh, being that targets can be associated with a number of different workflows. You can actually come in here and look at, you know, the entire workflow of this specific target. Uh, lastly, I'll uh, show you our remote access dashboard that I alert, uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, so this is a dashboard that gives you access to the elementals or encoders, or, you know, TEM encoders, uh, uh, harmonic encoders. Uh, basically, you can access them right from Zen Master. So if you're familiar with, with the Elemental encoder, I'll click on open here. 
And what this does is it opens, you know, the full UI of this encoder. I can now go in, manage my uh, encode settings, restart the encoder, uh, set up my input or output, whatever I need to do, all from the browser, all from the browser, uh, from anywhere in the world. Um, that concludes my demo of ZenMaster. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you and have a nice day.